Hello and welcome to the Dead Air Dudes. I'm Izzy. I'm Raka. Lord, Lord Raka. And Sith Lord, the real PBJ. All right, that caught everybody off guard. Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, welcome our special, our special guest, PBJ, as we're going to talk and discuss all things Star Wars and particularly Ahsoka. Okay? Ten now, to the day. Yeah, so all those who saw it, uh, be advised, and all those who didn't see it. So let's give a quick uh, a quick synopsis or, or a quick little quick little thing. Go ahead, take it away, guys. Well, so- um, okay, I'll I'll just jump right into it. So we have um, one of the um, actually the only apprentice of Anakin Skywalker who. Uh, left the Order of the Jedi. Um, and if anybody's not caught up, you should really watch uh, uh, The Clone Wars, the animated series, because it's very good and really, really t- has a lot of information, backstory about Ahsoka. And she leaves the Jedi Order completely, and she becomes sort of an outcast. But uh, later on, um, she kind of comes back to the light side, not officially as a Jedi, but she believes more in the light side than the dark side. And she's trying to do things that are in that vein. Uh, along this, she, she runs into um, a rebel faction and she becomes friends with them. She befriends them. She helps their cause. And then they ultimately have uh, a, a primary uh, a combatant known as Grand Admiral Thrawn, um, who oh. is sort of like, he is a really cool dark character who doesn't have any sith lord or jedi force powers but he's very very much part of the empire and he was um through a season finale of the animated series star wars rebels um sort of ousted out of the galaxy and along with a young jedi named um uh um ezra ezra um, and now Ahsoka uh, finds out that there are some factions and some people who want to either bring Thrawn back or some way uh, bring the dark side of the Empire back into power. And the show really focuses on her trying to stop this uh, and at the same time possibly find the once lost Ezra. Um, and so I think that's where, in a synopsis, that's kind of where the show's at. Oh, see, for all you guys who did not see the Clone Wars, there you go. You have just you you just caught up and enter <clears throat> Soka. As uh we see the character previously in The Mandalorian, and obviously played by Rosario Dawson with you know great uh you know, she actually does a pretty good job. Now, in comparison to the show. Do you guys think that um, it's necessary to watch the show, uh, meaning the 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 Clone Wars? No, it fills in the gaps, and like like PBJ said, and it provides a lot of um, less questions. You, you know what's going on. If you did watch the show, you are appreciative of it coming to live action, but I think somebody can come right off the proverbial Jedi street and just enjoy it because they know they know who's on what side and what's happening yeah for me personally I was watching it what I uh actually went back and saw a lot of the the show to get because they kept talking about Ezra and Admiral Thrawn and this that even though I had a working knowledge of those characters I wanted to go back and see oh Hera what's her name she's this and why does the kid have green hair? Oh, Kanan. Oh, I have the I have the books of Kanan. Kanan was Kanan was a uh, certificate <clears throat> to uh, Ezra. Oh, Ezra's the, this is and Sabine. Oh, she's she's Mandalorian, but she wants to be a Jedi. Ah, okay, now it all makes sense, you know. So you know, it just kind of connects the dots a lot more and enriches. It, it becomes a more rich, fuller story. That but they, I think what you just oh, said is by design, right? So that it can lead people to Clone Wars and to Rebels and to other things so that they can, those that are really interested can dive deeper into Star Wars canon. 
Now, do you think that this eliminates of- people who are in part meeting? If you're just a, you know, a casual, yeah, a ca- exactly a casual, and you like Baby Grogu, you know, I know, uh, you know. So, uh, be, uh, I'm sorry, be, uh, Baby Yoda. You like Baby Yoda, and you don't know, you don't know his name is Grogu or whatever, and you just, you know, you like Pedro Pascal. So, you know, you just who doesn't? Do you think if that you... They, basically do you think that Filoni and company they made this too, you know, non-casual, too, uh, you know, you know what I mean? No, um, they they really. In order to do, in my opinion, in order to move the franchise forward, and you're going to tell this story of Ashoka, it has to lead to what happens in the new trilogy, um, with the with sort of the resurrection of, and that's what they're hinting towards. Again, maybe spoiler alert for those who have not seen this, they're kind of hinting towards um, the ability of the dark side to resurrect the dead. And that leads directly to the, the new trilogy. And it also, what how, how does the empire reestablish itself? And what happens in between? Um, there are also, uh, back to the original question, I, I agree. I think Mike's, uh, I think uh, uh, it, it, Darth Izzy said it correctly, uh, that if you didn't watch Rebels, if you didn't watch Clone Wars, it doesn't make the show very rich. If you watch those other shows, it fills in so much of the reason why Sabine is so tied to both Ashoka and Ezra, why they're all tied to to this this character of, of Thrawn and the witches. The, there's there's Sith Sith witches, um, and that's a big part of the, the the Ashoka show. There's a whole witchcraft part that is part of the dark side that they really explore. In those other two animated series, the animated series are phenomenal. Uh, um, a lot of people wonder if you could write those and make those. Why? Why were the the new trilogy so bad? Um, because well, the, the I think it was not. They did. They're great story. They needed the help of AI. They're... Well, what the strike's over. Wait, so. now that you said it, now, now that he said it, cat's out of the bag. We're already there. The All two right. of you. What is your what who? What are in those items that they're loading that General Thawne is loading onto his? I mean, come on, what's it? We already know what was put in the last, the last and the second to last episode. They're loading these things, and then you saw what the witches did to the stormtroopers. Yeah, I mean, I think they're freaking they're they're obviously dead bodies. They're bringing it. They they merged the Walking Dead, and not only Walking Dead, you can't kill them. They're infinite. But they keep they keep coming back. So remember what pray tell is in those coffin like boxes. You have to. You also have to remember you've got a big part of Star Wars and and any show like Star Wars Star Trek continuity. You got to make it all all the canon work, right? You have to make all the you have to make so, all the characters that are listed as canon be able to coexist in this in this timeline. No multiverse, no no parallel universe. Everything's got to work out. Remember the story said, of Darth Plagueis. The as our, Darth as Plagueis. our resident Star Star Wars warden, is there an element of the resurrected dead army of the dead in canon? I don't yes. know. Um, that is the question. Is he, uh, I mean, well, you, I'm okay. not. <sighs> this is my this assumption. Way. This is my theory. Is That's what he's carrying in his payload. That's what he's bringing back to the galaxy, the original galaxy far, far away. And that he has an unbeatable army of dead. Forget about <laughs> the forces of good, evil, and the, you can't kill these things. All right, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go on a tangent here because which 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 is or the part of the problem of Star Wars in general and the whole thing. Low the boom, baby. Why is this fascination? Why do we have this fascination or the creators or whatever 
Lucas himself with doing prequels, going back, going backwards and filling in the blanks where they don't even really need to fill in those blanks. Move towards the future and tell the story. What happens next is more important because we what are you doing, even though continuity, uh, as PJ mentioned, everything is, it works so far. And you create these cool stories, but then it just makes me think, okay, if Thrawn is creating an undead army of clone troopers or whatever else, then why the hell don't they freaking take over everything? And why does Ray essentially herself freaking, you know, take out what's left or whatever the hell they'll call it by that point? Like, But isn't that the end game, as you saw in the last, very last Star Wars movie, is that Palpatine himself is going for longevity eternal. Beyond the body. <coughs> he's basically you, just not cloning. He's cloning his essence you know, to continue. They were doing it science-wise. They weren't doing it. Now they, now you're coming with the with the with the with the fantasy aspect, which don't get me wrong, I love, you know. You're coming with the supernatural aspect of this, which was never brought up before. Even they try to even steer it even even the force to try to steer it even more scientific and make it mitochondrians, which thank God they wrecked on that. But, you know. To, 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 yeah. to the first question you have, to Izzy's first question. Yes. The fascination with prequels. Mm. They, they, it, it was completely, I think, I think it was completely unintentional until Star Wars New Hope. When, because when he, when when George Lucas brought it out to that that's the movie he wanted to make and he was trying to look for financial backers in, in 1970, he, he started with the middle of the movies, right? So New Hope is is the fourth of the movies that he wanted to make. So you're already stuck with well, I've got three more prior movies that tells the backstory of all these characters. So right there, built in since the 70s. He's got prequels. It was it was always in his game plan because he never got to make movies one, two, and three. He started with four. So he was always going to go back. And he, not only did he always go back, he found himself, I think, fascinated with creating an entire history that goes beyond the first three. We're talking about uh, um, people like Darth Bane, uh, people like, uh, uh, like the Sith Empire from a thousand years ago. So he had a lot of, uh, he could draw from a lot of history. The problem with that is he got to make it all fit to the present line. Of course, I and, mean, and, the, and that's know, a big problem. He 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 did kind and of then, paint himself in, in, into some corners. I mean, the whole the whole theory of the Sith being you know only two is ridiculous. And then you have, it is, and it truly is. And then you have a thousand Jedi's, and you have only two Sith at a time. That that makes no sense. It, it, it truly makes no sense because, and and the, the story of the Sith is, you you know no matter who your apprentice is, they're gonna one day kill you. Exactly. So why am I gonna hire an apprentice who's already built in? He's going to kill me. It, does that truly makes no sense? Right. Now, if we go back even capitalism further, at its finest. But there's a time period where there were no, um, the the, the order of two. There was a long, long, long time, which I think they're trying to make eventually. If you play any of the video games, you find a little bit more of this. The or if you read the books, you see a little bit more of this pre-order of two. Um, there's a whole Sith world. There's there's Sith temples. There's a whole like Sith community uh, before they decided the rule. Oh, Sith Facebook. The Church of Satan. The United States of Sith. <clears throat> what you think about the dark side? Um, they, they, they really doesn't make it, it doesn't make any sense to have just two. And that's, that, that was a, I think a problem and, you know, you can't, how are you going to solve that? Um, and then what makes even worse, the last trilogy sucked so badly that now you've got to make everything fit to this really bad trilogy. And so now the, like Ahsoka, Mandalorian, all of those shows have to somehow redeem the last three movies. I mean, and so far so good, but now you have, you put yourself in the position that you have all these characters which are cool or which are relevant within the Star Wars universe. 
where the hell were they when the shit went down? Um, well, Boba Fett was in somebody's stomach, and so, uh, but Boba Fett's character, so, I think, they so, saw uh, they, they Mandalorian. Came. All this is set when in between the Return of the Jedi and yeah. the next trilogy. Exactly after Jedi. After Jedi. So like Sabine says, we don't even know if, and there's a key phrase they found, was somebody else who wrote about it online. Sabine says, we don't even know if the Emperor is dead, truly dead. It's just a rumor. And then that's Which, the one I do agree with in, in, in the, whole, the whole grand scope of everything is when everyone's jumping up and down after the Battle of Endor and they're all, they're all getting their medals. He walks. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, it's great that we defeated, we destroyed the Death Star, but the galaxy is pretty fucking big, you know? I mean, who the hell knows? I mean, it's not like you can call someone, hey, by the way, you know, you know, we, we just killed the Emperor. Uh, by the time it gets over there... Fake news. Uh, oh, and, you're, and, and now they made it even bigger because they jumped to another galaxy. And if you, this, is, this is where the ending of Ahsoka was so... so, so It would have been so much richer if people saw the, the animated series because mm -hmm. they they find um there's an ancient um uh, ancient force world that depicts the father the son and and, and uh, i think a wife and or a daughter and it's supposed to be like like a trilogy a trinity um one depicts the light side one depicts the dark side one depicts um um the everlasting force and the daughter is supposed to be the light side, which Ray is a part of. The character Ray is supposed to be the successor of who she's supposed to be the reincarnation of the daughter, the first light side force oh wielder. Boy. Oh, oh boy. And if this the statue that Balin is, is standing on at the end is he's standing on the old man who's like represents all of the force. To the, to the left is the sun who represents the Sith and the evil. And the headless right is the daughter, which represents the, the light, the Jedi. So again, if, if you didn't see the if you didn't see any of the, the rebel Star Wars Rebels or Star Wars Clone Wars, you would never known. And then the, even more deeper than that, in order to become a force ghost, you have to reconcile both your Sith and Jedi side, which Yoda does on his path to becoming a force ghost in the last uh, season of Star Wars Clone Wars, which is amazing because he has to fight Darth Bane. He's got to fight, fight all these other e ancient Darths and then eventually fight the dark uh, Darth Yoda, um, like his dark side. Because everybody has a good and bad side, right? So the Jedis have, a, have, have mostly 95% light side but there's that 5% bad side. That's why on Dagobah, when he told Luke to go in the cave, Dagobah has a lot. He was actually protecting a Sith world, which the Dagobah planet was. And so it has Sith caves and Sith pockets. And when he went there, um, Luke fought Vader, which is really a represent. And then Vader's head, he cut it off and the, the, head explode, the helmet exploded and he saw his own head there. So he was fighting a Sith spirit in the cave. Again, all this stuff is in the, the animated series, which was amazing. And I was like, why isn't this a movie? I don't understand. Well, Same I mean, thing with, I could go off on Star Wars. Same so wait, what, Star, what, is, what, is the, what is the origin of the Force? Is it in this galaxy? That's where you see the, the, the representation in the back. Also, so much of Ashoka took, took from those series. If you go back to the series, there's they find especially that orb that that told the star map yeah. of right that orb is in is in the, the the animated series or the orbs themselves. The, I think they're I'm not, they, they they go by a different name, but they're they're the secret to where this the the force comes from or the discovery of the force, which is the planet they're on right now. So it came from a galaxy far, far away from their galaxy, which some people, some theorists think is actually our galaxy. 
and Lord Balin, rest his soul, Ray uh, 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 Stevenson, um, which you can't use him now. Um, um, well, I, I, actually, it, it's going to be interesting because with AI, you can generate his image. Uh, yeah, but there's there's a get ready. Star Wars, if they're going to do that, get ready for a tremendous amount of backlash. Trip, Too mean, bad they signed the contract. They, they already, they already, they did it for for uh, Luke. They've done it already. If it's in, the, if it's in their contract, but well, there's a percentage. Be, we can't get into it too much, but it's not yet ratified. But there's a percentage of AI that can cannot be used. Uh, I'm sure they can fit <clears throat> it within the percentage, but that's here or there. So this is fantastic stuff. You're giving us really deep, deep history into. What's going on here? Now I take it all back. In watching all those other episodes, uh, Clone Wars and everything else, you see Ahsoka in a different light. When when Ashoka falls, Balin kills her. In effect, she falls into the water, and she lands on that that astral plane. That's directly out of the animated series. Yes, because he landed Ahsoka, on Anakin. Ahsoka, that, that, that I know. It, it, it's astral planes. And the spirit, maybe the body's dead, but the spirit is still there floating. And there's potentials, there's chances that the spirits can return back to the world of the living. Um, but they've got to go through certain trials. And some of those trials for her happen to be when she ran into, which I'm, I'm actually, that part I very think is a good part, is I, didn't, I don't like the way they left. I have problems with the way Star Wars treats Darth Vader. Um, I think they've Darth Vader is supposed to be. We all grew up in the seventies and eighties. Are you saying you're saying Darth, 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 you're saying Darth Vader? Darth Vader? You're talking about Anakin? Or you're talking about the whole entirety of the character? Vader, the whole entire of the character. Um, the closest thing in modern times that we've seen to what Vader's supposed to be is in a fantastic one-off movie, Rogue One, where we see Vader uh, basically dismantle an entire army of rebels. And kills them with with reckless abandon and a cold hearted killer. That's Vader. And in and in in a little bit of it in in um, Obi Wan's uh, one off series, but I didn't like there either. I liked at the beginning when Vader was just torturing the hell out of Obi Wan. You know, you you basically made me what I am. You cut off all my limbs. And you set me on, you let me go on fire. And now I'm going to exact revenge on you slowly. I didn't like how it ended where Obi-Wan once again ended up, because by that, if, if, if you do Crack that, Obi-Wan always beats, Obi-Wan always beats Vader, then Vader is never really the greatest uh, 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 Sith Lord ever because he gets keeps getting his, his butt handed to him by but, Obi-Wan Kenobi, but who let's, by let's, default let's, should be like Jesus Christ. But let's be honest, is did he really get defeated? And and Vader? A new, Yeah, Vader. And you hope he would, I mean, he kind of let himself, you know, get taken out of and became and became a became a, a force ghost, right? So Obi-Wan was also like 900 years old. So, I mean, Obi-Wan looks so bad. Now, Obi-Wan did beat him on on the cheese on the when, when when he cut off his limbs and that left the left for dead. Yes, he beat but he beat Anakin. Yes, he beat Anakin. It wasn't what, Darth Vader. I, I really do hope there's an Obi-Wan season two. I don't know if they're gonna do it or if it is, but In I the think there should cartoon, be uh Vader was about to kill Ahsoka until until Ezra, you know. Yeah, Ezra. yeah. And then that that fight, which they they kind of alluded to um in when Obi-Wan fought Vader and he sliced half his helmet off. Yeah. And you can see half of it was it was supposed to be against Ahsoka in the from the animated, but here they used it for him versus Obi-Wan. Um but I want that Vader, I want that Vader from Rogue One, because otherwise you've you've what I think the, the 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 prequels did is it humanized Vader, 
And when you do that, people felt sorry for, for Anakin. People felt sorry for Vader. He's not the big bad, all evil. There's a reason why I put in my, my name tag today, Sith Lord. That Vader's supposed to be the greatest of all Sith. And you can't do that if you keep getting your butt handed to you by one Obi-Wan. Kenobi. They all get the butt handed to them. The Sith, the Sith are useless. Let's be honest. I mean, they never, they, they never win anything. Well, I, 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 the Emperor t- has a pretty good, a pretty well, good victory okay. lap. All right. Well, okay, ex- except for Emperor. Okay, but I mean, besides, you know, and, and, and he was fucking held by 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 arguably the worst character in the history of 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 of, of cinema, Jar Jar Binks, to, to, to even acquire to get that win. All right, so it wasn't even him by himself. I mean, it's, pretty, it's why all the Jar Jar Binks hate. Why? Let me look. Have it's, you not seen this movie? <laughs> His voice is a little wonky. Okay, back to Ahsoka. So because I've, I've 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 read and I've seen and I've heard lots of backlash against it. Some have said that uh, Filoni needs another voice. That it it was too aimed at the fans of the shows, and he probably needed another another writer in there to kind of steer him away from that. And he kind of was. It was too much. I heard that that was like the argument yeah. was too much, and some of the dialogue was stilted and wasn't all great, and some of the characters' machinations weren't you know weren't fully you know it's like, and if you didn't, it, which I asked you before about, about about quote unquote casuals, if I don't know who, why do I give a shit about Ezra? Sabine's That's annoying, true. hot but annoying, so why do I care? You know what I mean? She's a whiny little kid. You know now, Ahsoka, I, 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 there's been there's been an established already uh, lexicon on her, and we are, I already even by not even me not even know I seen her before in the Mandalorian. So yeah, she's you know had her an episode, pretty cool, whatever. You know she got the two lightsabers, looks pretty cool, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm just made that with out here. So what what's what's the deal? You know what? Uh, I mean, how do you guys feel as far as you know, Filoni and I mean, it's hard for me to separate it because I want it actually to be more true to the Star Wars canon and characters than away. Because the the problem is when you go away and you get a little too inventive is that you lose the identity of really who they are. Right. So I'm okay with it. Maybe the casual fan wouldn't be. But to be honest, the casual fan is really into lightsabers and some special effects. Hate to be hate yeah, to be minimalizing so. that point of view, but they're not looking for deep rooted um, Star Wars relationships. They're not. Uh, but other than the ending, which we can get to, I enjoyed I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the trip where we were. I enjoyed where we're going. I enjoyed the new characters. I really enjoyed having to see um, Hayden and Christian come back again and and and, and revisit some deep darkness that are there. I do have some issues. I think Thrawn, I'm not so much into his physical appearance that a lot of people were bombarding him with. I think he wasn't shown to be Wait, as what sinister the criticism as he about, be. What is the criticism about Thrawn's uh, uh, They appearance? didn't like his physical pretty, appearance as much. Yeah, people, He's I guess pretty close. expecting more. The way they mentioned Thrawn was a master strategist, probably the most evil or the worst person in the empire, probably next to the emperor. That I think they could have used some assistance with dialogue writing and with just writing in general to to show without showing some signs that he really is a, you know, he's a scary son of a bitch. Yes. No, no, no. We, we, we actually do see it. I, I'm going to differ with you because there's a part where he, he, he the witch is for their advice about what to do, and they they even dispatches Balin and and his second to go attack them, and then send a, a fleet of only two ships, and then bombard them. So basically, let's bomb our own people. Yeah, no, he's he's willing to sacrifice. And, then, fine. and, and then what he did with the the latest witch that they just ordained, and basically, uh, well, yeah. I deputize you and go off to a suicide mission. Yeah, but see, that's so, that's so that's I more. Think that that's, they're backing him up. 
that's more evil. I wanted to see Hannibal Lecter level sinister tactician. No, but, but I don't. I don't think that that's how the character was. The character was more uh, like a tactician, and you know. But keep, I wanted to see more tactician. Like a, a the fact that those are acceptable losses. You know, it's like he's yeah. willing to he's willing to give up a portion of himself for the greater good. He's willing yeah, to. I, I think they. Are- Lose the battle to win the war. They sh- yeah, they should. They showed him to be very cold and calculating, um, you know, and that's what a, t- a, st- a, st- a strategist, a tactician, they make the cold decisions to how to win a war, regardless of who dies, and what sacrifices everyone has to make. He even he even turns the stormtroopers into oh yeah zombies, and he when he he's he they ask him oh he's good with do it. they know what they're going into. He said, "Yeah, they they all know this for the the greater good of the empire." So he informed them ahead of time: if you die, you'll still be in service to the empire. Well, this is the so whole I point. He, My if, question if, is: if I am writing his character, I love what he's doing. I don't think anybody should question him. Like it already should be at a point where they know you signed up for this. Not only like that, you signed up under him. You know what I mean? I know it's for the audience to know. But it's kind of like one of those things where um, you're you're reducing his his reach, his aura by having even been questioned. Rocker wants some sort of cackling cackling villain that chews up scenery and is gonna freaking you know uh, start throwing things or you know as soon as he's being questioned they to show that kind of power. That's that's a that's a Rocker wants. You want you want essentially. I what, want them to eat the the waste disposal after that. You want essentially what what what, what, what Vader was. When, no, no, not 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 you could, physical no. anger, but like that's, raise an eyebrow no, no. and say, "Oh, you're going to be you dinner." Is he's right? That's what you want. You want when he grab a uh, I don't know. Don't come! Don't come at me. When he grab, I'm not sure if it was Grand Moff Tarkin or uh, one of the guys, and he you know got him. With the, with the with the choke with the choke force the choke hold and you know kind of threw him against the freaking wanted, that's what you know Rocka what would have made it what would have made Rocka happy is when Sabine was brought out as as a prisoner you you wanted him to like eat his eyeball eat, eat her eyeballs maybe right one there. leg maybe a left ankle and he says I will let you reunite with Ezra but you won't see him with your own eyes as he chomps away at her eyes. That's what yes, you're something like that. Okay, yes. It's I think Disney. I think nail his head here. It's nail Disney. Head. Wait, okay, can we circle back now? What is Lord Balin's deal? Some say uh, uh there's a lot okay. of theorists out. Uh some say that he's um he's out to destroy both Sith and and light side, all the force, because all it's done is bring. And he says his character says it all the time. All the force has ever brought is a cycle of continual killing, uh, uh, conquering, killing, conquering, saving. Even the Jedi does it. Everyone lies. Everyone's full of it. And that I think he wants to end all of the cycle. He's a nihilist. I, I, dude, you, you just completely took it the words out of my mouth. He's a nihilist. So, so, so like mean, you said at the end, when he's standing well, on it's, the. It's go bail him. Yeah, yeah, when he's standing on the, the Mount Rushmore statue, what is he doing there? That's, that's, I wish, I don't even know. Is there a season two? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They've been told that, but movie. they see, because right, this is a little, in, a little insight. Supposedly, Mando, Boba Fett, Ahsoka are all supposed to be within. Obviously, they're in the same within the same universe at the same time, saying at the same, going on at the same time. Now they were going to do a whole. They're gonna. They're all gonna combine and end up being one last film. That which is the film that Filoni is gonna film. That he's gonna direct. One of the of, of like three on. exactly which can put everything. Now, are we gonna see a season two before then? It all depends on the strikes and whatever else. But yeah, supposedly it's all supposed to be, you know, you know, uh, taken into a nice little bow. So, 
All right. But so see, um, I don't, I don't know how they're going to do that with with also because you got. I don't know how you do make a movie like that without putting in the Luke Skywalker character. Maybe he's in there. I, 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 I. You were saying. Oh, Bailey. the problem. The, well, I and think the Balin is. His character is trying to. Yeah, he's a nihilist. Shut, yeah, he's trying and to then sh- shut it the all. The future down. movie that supposedly Filoni will direct and produce and write. Uh, you're saying some problem or some a challenge obstacle they would have would be. It's a it's a huge problem because the the the, the next trilogy screws everything up because. The, it's already written. Which is my problem with the whole which going with, by going backwards and doing prequels. You mess up the continuity. Big, because now you have, yeah, and you now, have rich history. And now I care I care more about now what Ray I eh, Ray, okay, who cares? You know? But now I want to know in Ray's time, what's Mando doing? What's Grogu doing? What's Ahsoka doing? Because if she's around, then why didn't she freaking help? Because it's only what seven, it, only seventeen years after, right? I think it's seventeen it's years. Grand, after. And seventeen years after, it's not that long. So I if you, they if all you, alive. I mean, if if you're thinking of if Grand Admiral Thrawn is the second coming of the Emperor in terms of evilness, where is he? Like, where is he in 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 Ray's world? Yeah, they, yes, they don't even mention him. Yes, of course, yes, they don't, but they don't even. They don't exactly. They yeah, don't but even, it's he, no one even mentions him. He's such a badass. So, they, don't even, they don't even, you know, yeah. no years of no one mentions so him. This is this is a huge problem. If if um if Luke Skywalker is trying to resurrect the Jedi Order, where is where is uh where's the kid? Where's what's his um um. Ezra, where's Ezra? He's 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 one of the the I'm young uh, Jedi's. Dead too. You know what I mean? Like he's he should he should, but he should be in Luke's world. It's Luke Skywalker's resurrecting the Jedi's. Here comes a long lost Jedi who was trapped in another galaxy, unless he dies here. Uh, no, facing... Another one. I mean, which probably you uh, PBJ, you probably have a better better insight on that. During Obi Wan the Obi Wan Kenobi series, where the hell was Kanan? Because if they could if they were killing all the freaking Jedi's, wouldn't Kanan be running around somewhere? Actually, but he's in hiding too. Wait, actually, I don't want to give this dead. away to anybody. So should I just say it a spoiler if anyone's not aware? I, I'm not sure I'm confusing I'm confusing it either with Star Wars Rebels or Star Wars Clone Wars, but they Kalen and, and Ezra run into Obi Wan. And Obi Wan tells him he's on a secret mission, but they're like, "You're the great Obi Wan Kenobi. You should be, you should be helping us fight the Sith." And actually, Darth Maul makes an appearance. And uh, yes, Darth and actually, Maul, kids, that there Darth is a great. Maul. Yeah, actually, and this is one of the things again. I, I'm championing the two animated series because you see characters who just were. Arbitrarily destroyed by Star Wars, Darth Maul. The the you're, the appre- the Emperor doesn't pick apprentices because they suck. He picks them because they're like a like a draft. You're the great. You're the number one pick. You are the number one pick on my team. And Darth Maul gets eliminated in the first movie, but he makes a comeback and he actually rebuilds himself. He's half robot now because he got sliced in half. Um, but then he actually has this revenge. And if you ever see it in the animated series, Darth Maul has a brother who he's training in the in the dark arts as well, because his ultimate goal is for he and his brother to dethrone the emperor, revenge on the emperor, and then they become the new Sith. And in in that battle, the emperor finds out about it and fights both of them, and destroys them both handily. And Darth Maul is running off like a, a chicken, and then he decides to take out all of his anger on finding Obi Wan and killing him. He has a final uh, encounter on Tatooine, 
the old Obi Wan versus Darth Maul. So it's like, wow, you you've you've tried to fix all the problems that was created by George Lucas and his movies, and Darth Maul makes a really good appearance, but you don't again, you don't see him anymore. And it drives it drives me crazy because. All that great, you know, Filoni and uh, did all this to fix everything, and then you got to ruin it with the last three movies. Yes, Rocco. The last three movies, I think. No, good. Finish the thought. The last three movies, I think, the best way they don't want to do it is to say the last three movies don't count. I mean, oh, it was an alternate universe. Well, they they, they they basically say the second one doesn't count. That's damn fucking sure. So, I mean, I have a force question. This second, has always been on my mind. It just popped up. You know how even Ahsoka and everybody else, they know somebody's still alive. They have a feeling. They were, they're all in touch, whether they like it or not. Maybe to the varying degrees. How do they not? Both dark side and light side know Obi Wan's still alive. Keen is still alive. That person's still alive. Darth Maul's still alive. They know they may not pinpoint exactly with GPS coordinate specifications, but they know. How come sometimes they do so know everything? You, oh, that person's still alive. I feel it, and then they don't. Can I try to salvage this one, Izzy? Before, if you want to jump in, I just, very quickly, no, Obi Wan Kenobi. They actually cleverly built that in to the Obi Wan Kenobi series TV show, because it's in in that show, Obi Wan has somehow cut his ties to the force. He doesn't have powers. He's very weak in the force. And so it's very slyly, that's how nobody knows he's around. He's no longer tied to the force. He deactivated his force. Yes. He, he, he turned off his... You know, he, he put a proverbial <laughs> aluminum hat around his beam. He took he, he, he now, took batteries off, out, out of the lightsaber and then he's good to go. He, he throw the phone away. You got to take the chip out. Chip, however, SIM card, how, throw the SIM card. However, big problem. At the end of the movie, at the end of the TV series, he regains his connection to the Force, and Vader is aware that he's alive. He's back on the radar. So now, so now you're back on the grid. So others, others who are Force sensitive. Because the Inquisitors are former Jedi too, right? The Inquisitors are all Force sensitive. This is what's very interesting. Because this is another thing that leads Ahsoka back into this and the, the dark witches. Most of the Inquisitors are dead. They've been, look at them, they're gray skin and they've been resurrected. Well, they won't that, I kind of figured that out. I, I was like, whoa, because I'm like, damn, they look like Inquisitors. And I'm like, I never put one together into them. Oh. But now it's confirmed. They might, they, they might actually be dead inside. And Vader won't so let this should them be. Go. This should be re Vader retitled and Star Wars The Winter's Coming. Well, see, I love the whole thing. I mean, I love I love the fact because people people always say, oh, it's sci-fi. It's not really sci-fi. It's it has magic. Sci-fi, but it's really more fantasy. Yes, it's magic. magic. You know, it's not but your sci-fi Star Trek, which is Star Trek is sci-fi. Yeah. Star Wars is yes, that's true. Has more yeah. leaning, it has leanings within religion, within supernatural elements, within uh, romance, you no know, romance, within freaking obviously <laughs> inspired by you know, but many different civilizations and different, you know, so it, it particularly now, and then you know, so obviously it's you know, now, now they also work in, they also work into those movies very slightly that if you are strong in the force, you can hide in the force. Because how did all the Jedi not realize that Palpatine is the Emperor? Exactly. And how did? So, oh, here's my other thing. You know, and know that, know. Darth Vader know the freaking that he had that he had he had twins and that they were alive. That's, how do you catch the whole Jedi Order? How do you catch the whole Jedi Order off guard? You captured Leia, and you don't know. You don't know. A, you don't know she's the daughter. B, you. That's don't... a big problem. Well, no. Here's my biggest problem. Order sixty six. You tell me you kept that secret, but all the other troopers again. Knew. Again, it's, you know what it's, I mean? it's, it's, they use. I don't want to nitpick, use, but. And here's what we're talking about. They so meaning, I thought. They, they yeah, they meaning the st the star Star Wars people in control of the story use that. Ability to to like foresight and to see very arbitrarily, like Balin when he meets 
uh, uh, what's it, uh, Sabine? He like closes his eyes and he's he's like rattles off her like like he's reading her bio. Um, so they use it so arbitrarily that that's kind of stupid. That how do some people know? How do some people not know? And but like when, really but like the big thing like Order sixty six, <laughs> lay people knew what was going on. Non force people like in a switch, execute Order sixty six to everybody. So everybody else freaking knew, except the Jedi. I find well, that that was have... the one thing I found to be a little bit incredulous. I mean, what if they did it with a computer chip in the back of the head? Would that be a bit more? Would that be more? But beautiful? it's still a disturbance in the force. It's that, that big of a a widespread people who knew. It's technology as as opposed to uh, uh, well, actually, that's what Order sixty six is. All the stormtroopers had a, a had a a code written into them. So it's not necessarily force. It's more like a technological. Uh, I know, but you're still conjuring this in your brain. You know what I mean? Like, like you don't have to know exactly what it means, but it, the minute that order is given, I just find it uh, like for a group of knights who are so empathic, I just found it like, wait, you didn't have one clue? Would None you of you? call the knights? I would call them more like space monks. Potato, potato. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, because okay. they, you know, I, I, I think they're more like monks well, than knights. Because knights, I mean, no, I mean they, 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 they call them. They, they don't get married. They no. don't. They don't have relations. Well, no, but no, you're applying it to, to medieval terms. I'm sorry, they're, they're knights, Wait. dude. If you, you look at the crusades, them. they're knights. They they go out to battle with a freaking lightsaber. It's it. They do marry the two terms because man, the Jedi themselves call themselves one of the ranks is Jedi Knight. So, and they don't. They 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 do take a vow of. Well, they don't explicitly ever call it celibacy. They they, they say you vote. You you become. Your family is the is the is the order. No longer you don't have a family of your own. I swear, course, obviously, people. I've seen Obi Wan in a bar do one of these. Oh well, no. There's a, there's a whole. Okay. This is some young lass, like hey, hey. The whole, there's, a, there's a whole huge theory. I'll well, I'll tell you guys in another episode about about the no no the, the, the wait, 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 wait. triangle between between Padme, Obi Wan, and and Anakin. Yeah. Wait, 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 okay. But even before that, you if, again, if if any watched the animated series, an anime series, they explore the the romance between Obi Wan and the Queen of the Mandalorian. Had he not been a Jedi, he that would have they would have married. I was bracing for what you just said. Obi Wan is really Luke's father. No, I was ready. For no, that. Ready. No, oh. if you look, if you if you again, this is in the animated series. Obi Wan is there, and he apparently had a type of special relationship with the, one of the queens of the Mandalore. I so, scratch your back. You scratch then, mine. And then. Oh. <laughs> and in and in in the Obi Wan series, in the Obi Wan series, where he's talking, I think he's talking about the order that how he was taken from his family. So he had brothers, he had a, like a family, but he was taken away from that and brought into the Jedi Order, never again to see his family. His you know, so he talks about how he he couldn't have a family. But is that the I one time he could take his that. helmet off? She could take his own role. Obi Wan, not 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 Mandalore, who's not a true biological Mandalorian. Mando, he was born on a moon of Mandor, not on the actual planet of Mandalore. Exactly. Yes, he was but, like fostered in. We we kind of kind of went on a, on a massive tangent on, on the on the other side Sorry. of Star Wars lore. Let's get back and bring it back to what everybody you know wants to know. Bottom line, did you guys enjoy the series, whether it be a one-off or be season one of another season or whatever else? Did you guys enjoy the show or so the series? I'll go quickly, then then I would like to save Sith Lord for last. I enjoyed the series. I enjoyed it a lot. It, it started out with a boom. It brought back a lot of um nostalgia. I wasn't too thrilled with the ending. I thought it was a bit of a letdown. I, I wanted a little more, but 
if it ends that way, it has to be because there's a season two. I leave it now in Sith Lord's hands. I enjoyed it, but I think it could have been better. Mm. We are in agreement. I, I, no, 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 we're not in agreement. <laughs> Did you not listen to what I just said? <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't... All right, I'm sorry. That's, that's the Jack talking. It I'm could, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It could, according to your review, it's like a nine out of ten. It uh, sounds like a nine, nine, eight, eight, eight point five. It sounds like you're giving it high praise. Eight point five. I'm saying, I'm saying it's probably six and a half to seven, and Ooh. it could have been an eight. It could have been an Ooh. eight and a nine. I, I love Rosaria Dawson. I think she's an amazing actress and person. I love that she loves this genre. But yeah, I think the, no. char- the character of Ahsoka was a little one-dimensional. Flat. And they didn't go, they just didn't go deeper. Go into your like when they had the flashback, the spiritual flashback with her as a young Padawan with Anakin, that was going into the, the TV series Ahsoka. We saw that kid in there who was filled with self-doubt. Why are we doing this? Questioning the Jedi Order. And we don't, we, here now in the present day, she doesn't do any of that. Um, I, I think the Sabine character is a little annoying. I think the, the I don't know if they got the right person to play Ezra. I actually did like General Thrawn and I really liked Balin, but ba- the actors playing Balin is no longer with us. So, and what do you do with his storyline? Which I think is actually the juiciest. Not Ahsoka. Balin's story is actually is the best story in this. What about because the, what about, he represents what, what, what about the end? The, the represents what uh, what's the name? Um, the her his apprentice and uh, uh yeah, her, 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 apprentice, her like, the apprentice is is like okay, does she become the you know, Hera who I can um, uh, not Hera, but yeah, Hera, what happens to that? Um. Uh, his apprentice does she later become join uh, uh, the the Sith uh, fa- you know the the people who resurrect uh, uh, Palpatine? What happened? Do they get stuck in this universe? And he's overlooking the 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 planet of this Force rich planet with a statue of the original Force uh, representatives, almost as like he's got a grand plan happening, but we may not see it because you know rest in peace Ray Stevenson and. I don't. I. I, It's going to be hard to recast him, and I really want to. I really kind of think that's the overarching best story in all of it. I think they're going to probably recast him, and they're going to probably do the 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 crazy CGI uh, that that Rocka mentioned before. Going to have an actor. They're going to probably, you know, his his. his, his, they're gonna Luke Skywalker him. They're gonna retro yeah, they're Luke Skywalker. Him. They're, they're gonna grab my AI, baby. They're gonna, you know, I. Uh, I mean, for me, the series was was good. I actually was okay with the ending, but then again, I'm not as knowledgeable as you guys as far as the 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 the, the, the canon. But I still would like to see what the hell does happen after, as far as and how these characters are interconnected with. The next trilogy. I mean, I'm one of a continuity. That's I'm a big, a continuity guy. A big question. And one last question I have for you guys. Yeah. Has Hayden Christensen redeemed himself in the eyes of Star Wars fans? Because some people were, were giving him shit for, for many. For what? For his portrayal of Anakin. I'm okay with it. I liked his portrayal. I never had a problem with his portrayal. He. He had to morph from being <clears throat> ordained the second coming to navigating through the dark side's forces to no, to his history, what happened to his mom and his whole life, and with all the surge of power, get manipulated to what happens with his wife, with his friends, with the order, with everything. I liked how he portrayed his character arc and his defection eventually. I found no issue before. I, I didn't think he had anything to redeem. I mean, I think the actor himself did the best he could with the source material. And I think, to be honest, I think it was flawed source material. I think that George Lucas did not have an ideal plan. He kind of probably, this is my opinion, he probably winged it. 
a lot of it. And he really, first of all, he messed up. He had not to get too deep into it, but he he had a lot of fatal faults. I already mentioned the thing about the Sith and the Jedi. I also think that he really messed up with with with, with the ages of the characters. He completely messed up the whole relationship between Padme and, and Anakin, as well as the relationship with freaking with Obi Wan and the whole thing. I think he made them too young, too far apart. And I get what he was trying to get to, but it ruined the whole thing. It took you out of the, it was unrealistic, took you out of the storyline. So then all you saw Anakin and Christian playing a, a whiny little bitch until the midway through the second film and the third film where he actually became the Anakin that we know. So I think good for him. Awesome. Good to see him. So, yeah. yeah. I, I I agree wholeheartedly. The the problem wasn't Hayden Christensen. It was what he had to work with, the writing, the story development, or lack of story development. Um, and I, I actually think, I, I feel bad that people blame him, at, at the Hayden Christensen, because it's really not his fault. They did when it, when it came out. I think now people, yeah. since we're all older and the people who are fans of it, we're all adults now. I think now people have looked back and they see him, yeah, you know, they in, they're endeared to him more than, you know, kind of, you know, how they they had disliked Jar Jar Binks. No offense to I'm a, I'm, I'm at best. It wasn't his fault, obviously. Again, Lucas, you know, it's it amazing. Did, how did, did, such rich story, and also can be blamed for, in a way, ruining that story. Yeah. They needed a theatrical person on hand as an expert to lean to. I have this fantastic story. How do I make it relatable into a cohesive cinema plot? That's where they they kind of made that secondary and it didn't translate to a more polished piece. Final thoughts on, on Ahsoka and we out of here. I love it. I can't I there has to be a second season. I can't see it possible. Forget about the Filoni movie. You need to have a second season to finish it. Whatever you got to do with uh, the late uh, Ray, do what you got to do. But it's got to be finished so that there can be some completeness to it as we move forward. EBJ, it's worth watching. It's worth watching. It's a good show. Uh, it will be even better if it does lead to uh, either season two or, or like a final movie that wraps everything up. It, it's it's ratings will actually be viewed better if it was a nice build up to something else. The show is definitely worth a watch, especially if you're a fan of of uh, Star Wars Rebels, Attack of the Clones, or whatever um, the animated series, and or just you know Mandalorian in general. Oh. Used to be watched, and if you want the full story, go back and watch at least some of the pivotal episodes from those series and check them out. There's many lists online. We're going to probably, me, Rocka, and PBJ will probably, you know, try to do a list ourselves and post it out there for you guys. And yeah, check it out. For everybody, I'm Izzy. I'm Rocka. Sith Lord PBJ. Take care, everybody, as usual. May the force be with you. And always, always save the waves. Take care, everybody.